it's that time of year where, where you're kind of concluded with spring ball. You're, you're now kind of plotting the course, if you will, for the upcoming season. And, and I believe that things are better than they were a year ago. Now, a year ago, when I spoke to this group, we were at Universal Studios. And I was full of nothing but enthusiasm and optimism. Because, frankly, I didn't know our guys. <laughs> I had I'd just seen them in spring ball only against each other. I didn't know what the rest of the league would look like. But I knew I was back at UCLA, and it was a damn good deal for me, all right? So a year later, now I've been through a season, and I kind of see where we are relative to the competition, and I kind of see, you know, so excuse me if I don't sound quite as optimistic as I once was, but that's not because I'm any less enthusiastic. It's because now I see exactly what has to be done before we can take our rightful place among the nation's elite. And we're not that far away, but there are going to have to be steps taken. And I think we'll be better this year than a year ago, but we still got to instill a toughness in our program that frankly isn't quite there yet to be among the very, very best. Doesn't mean it can't happen, and it can happen fast, but we need a toughness. Like for instance, in this group right here, I sense a toughness. Do we have some tough people here? Where's John Richardson? John Richardson, stand up right back there. He's a, John Richardson, one of your own, right here from Westlake. There are legendary stories told about John when he played at UCLA of his toughness, all right? And so I'm trying to figure out the, the model. Who, who am I going to tell our players about who's rugged, who's tough, who's going to not take anything? Who do you want in the alley with you when you come get confronted by some enemies? Who is it that you want? As I'm thinking about this, I'm driving up to an event just like this. We're on our way up to Santa Barbara. It wasn't quite as big. It was at the home of Paul and Gloria Griffin, beautiful home right there on the beach in Santa Barbara. And, 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 I'm, and I'm sitting there thinking about how I'm going to get my, te with my team a little more grit. And as, as I'm thinking about this, about 300 yards in front of me, a car clips another car, and this car gets sent into a guardrail, which then spins it, and now it's flipping across the freeway. And I remember sitting there watching this, as we all would, just, it's in slow motion. How do I protect myself? But, oh my gosh, this poor guy. And he's going over and over and over, hits the other guardrail, comes back. This is right up on the 101, headed, headed towards Santa Barbara, and comes back across, hits the guardrail again. Now it's come, it looks like a pachinko ball, and ends up in front of me and spins and lands on its side. Driver door down, passenger door up. And I have veered off to the right now. I'm, I'm in the, the shoulder to the right side. And I'm probably from the edge of the stage from here. That's how, far, that's how close I am. And I'm looking at this car, and I'm seeing if anybody's moving. And I've got my, my phone ready to dial 911. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm frankly in shock that this has happened, right? And all of a sudden, this guy pops out of, of, this, of the passenger side window like a woman out of a cake. Okay? Now, I've never seen a woman pop out of a cake, but that's what he looked like, all right? So he pops up, and, and I'm sitting over here looking at him, and I've got my window down. Are you okay? Are you okay? And he goes, kind of shakes his shoulders. Yeah, I'm all right. Rick Neuheisel! <laughs> Honest to God. Rick Neuheisel! How the Bruins going to be? I said, we're going to be fine, but how are you? He said, I'm fine. Are we going to get tough? Are we going to get rugged? I said, if we're as tough as you are, we're going to kick some ass this year. I'm telling you right now. This guy went, honest to God, he went across the freeway five times. I mean, he, Rick Neuheisel. That's my kind of guy. He'd give to the poly campaign, I guarantee you. He'd find a way. But, uh, but, but, but that's, that's the ingredient we're missing. The other thing we're missing a little bit is, is the speed quotient. Three things had to happen in last year's recruiting class. Three things had to happen. I think we, we got it all done. Now, how quickly we'll uh, realize the fruits of our labor, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. But hopefully, quickly. Uh, the three things that had to get done, we had to get bigger. We had to get an offensive line 
presence. We were giving up probably 20 to 30 pounds a man on the offensive lines last year as we fared against the other teams in our conference. And so we went out and we got five great looking offensive linemen, okay? One is a kid from Hawaii by the name of Stan Hasiak. Now Stan is about 350 pounds, six foot five, and he benches 515 pounds, which is about that row, okay? <laughs> That's a good start when you're trying to get bigger and tougher, okay? The second guy we got was a big, good-looking kid out of Provo, Utah, by the name of Xavier Suafilo, who wants us to call him X. <laughs> I said, why? He said, why not? I said, good. <laughs> Works for me. I'm, I'm, I'm right now calling all the, uh, the, uh, the, t the movie producers that have those X-Man things. I'm just going to borrow the X. I just want to put it on in, our, in our, our hallways just to make sure he knew I held up my end of the deal. So, but Xavier is a 300-pound dancing bear. I mean, he, he's a very, very gifted athlete. And, and I think he has a chance to play early. The next guy is a guy by the name of Greg Capella from Visalia, California, who's a 320-pound kid, and he's what we call a goon guard. <laughs> now, we mean that in the nicest way. <laughs> that doesn't mean he's a bad guy, but he's one of those guys that kind of hunkers down, a sumo wrestler, if you will, that just hunkers down, and once he gets his mitts on you, he just, you're, you're kind of there for the day. And, and, and uh, so Greg, Greg has a chance to help us, and then... The fourth guy was a kid out of Irvine, California. Uh, the fourth freshman, I should say. His name is Nick Abel. Nick, Nick is from Irvine. Uh, he, he was 6'7", 250 when we started recruiting him. He's 6'8", 280 now. And I knew Nick was the kind of guy we wanted. When he came over to my home, we, we had the kids on their recruiting visit come to the house and have a little barbecue. And Nick walked in and I, hey, Nick, how are you doing? Just stoic. Gives me a little sneer and walk by me. And behind him is his mom, Lisa. I said, Lisa, what's the matter? He goes, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She's almost got tears in her eyes. She's embarrassed. Nick's hungry. <laughs> I said, <laughs> he gets like that when he's hungry? <laughs> I know what. I should have fed him. I should have fed him. When did he last eat? An hour ago. So I learned two things. One, we wanted Nick Abel, but two, we are not feeding him on game day. <laughs> and then the third guy is, is a guy from Mount San Antonio College, a junior college kid by the name of Eddie Williams. And Eddie is another classic goon guard. And, and you, you, I asked Eddie how, how old he is, and he says, count the rings on my neck. There's no neck. He's a, it's, it's a, he's a unique human being. He just... So, and he weighs 330. So we're not going to get pushed around anymore if these guys can come to, come to play and, and, and so forth. The second thing we had to do is we had to go get some speed. I talked to you about, you know, we got to get faster. We're, we're not, I don't see Flipper Anderson out there. I don't see Mike Sherrard out there. I don't see uh, the J.J. Stokes and all the different guys who we all remember fondly and going to those games and seeing our Bruins win. I, they're not out there. And, and Ben was the first one to tell me. He came into my office right when I got the job with socks on and said, you got no players. <laughs> you got no players. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wished he weren't so right all the time. But the facts of the matter are is we're working at getting players. And, and the kids in our program now are busting their tails and they're developing themselves into players. But we needed speed. We needed speed. And so the first guy we went and got, he was committed to USC at the time, Randall Carroll. He's the fastest kid in the state of California. And, and we kept talking to him, kept talking to him, and finally Randall s saw the light and said, I want to live on this side of town, which means he passed the IQ test as well. And, <laughs> And so Randall is coming. Now, in case you haven't seen, just last week, Randall ran the fastest time recorded in the state of California in the last 17 years. 
He ran a 10-3-0 at night, when, and I don't know why night's different, but the track coaches say it's different because it's cool. He says on a normal, certain normal time of the deal, that would have been a 10-2, and it's just killing it. So he's one of the, the premier track guys in all of the country, in all of the country, and he's coming to Let's all put our fingers up and hope that he can catch. <laughs> that would be outstanding. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, I know, but let's just hope he can catch. And then the other kid we went and got is, is uh, Damian Thigpen from Virginia. He, a uh, youngster who had, had been committed to Tennessee and decided that after meeting their coaches that that wasn't what he wanted to do. Uh, so he, he opened up his search again, and we were able to have him come out. And it was one of those beautiful days in January, you know, the Santa Ana conditions. It's 82, you know. It's like this all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> sure. Top down? Are you kidding me? So Damien decided to come, and he right now has the second fastest time in the country in the 300-meter uh, 300 300 meter hurdles. So he, we've got some real speed, legitimate speed coming in. And then the third thing we needed to get accomplished in recruiting was we needed to establish our presence again with USC. USC for a number of years had kind of had their way. A bully, if you will. Just kind of elbowing around, acting like, you know, hey, this is the way it is, we're taking these guys, you, you can have those. And, and, and the facts of the matter, that's not how it works in this town. And so we got into the living rooms, we didn't concede anything with respect to the guys other than the kids who couldn't read or write. But uh, <laughs> but we, we, we didn't concede a thing and we got, we got at, least, at least five kids in our class had scholarship offers to USC. At least five. I think probably a little bit higher than that. But that, that's a tremendous inroad and, it's, and, and it was noticed by then. I don't know if you saw the article by Ken Norton. Uh, where Kenny was complaining that one of the kids had changed his mind. Now, Kenny, Kenny's okay. Kenny's okay. Kenny, Kenny just got, got a little bit crazy for a second because he thought that one of the kids had changed his mind because there was rumor that Kenny was going to come back to UCLA. First of all, I didn't have a job open, which was, makes it difficult to offer a job to Kenny. And second of all, the guy that he said was going to come wasn't going to play defense. So it didn't make any sense. But Pete decided that it was important that Kenny went to the press and, and, and say it. And so it, it is what it is. But the, you, know what the, you know what the nice thing is? They give a shit. You know, excuse my language. That they think that's big deal. You know what? We're going to fight them on every street corner across the land, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to fight their tails everywhere we can. And it's one thing to say it. It's one thing to say it. It's a whole other thing to actually do it and then win the fight. And I guarantee you that's where we're headed. I, we got the home, did you like the home and home jerseys last year when we played them in home and home jerseys? I know a lot of you were disappointed that they had their home jerseys in our stadium. Well, we're going to like our home jerseys when they're back in the Coliseum this year, I promise you. And this town, this town, and again, give credit where it's due, but this town's big enough for two great football teams, and we just got to make sure we take care of our end of the deal. And that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do it with absolutely painstaking diligence. We're not going to do any shortcuts. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to make you proud. But if you'll keep coming out to the Rose Bowl every chance you get, and you'll keep bringing the enthusiasm that you brought here tonight, and we do it on a day-to-day -day basis, and we don't concede anything, and we'll fight them on any corner, the Bruins will be back in that Rose Bowl on the right day, which is January 1st. That's a fact. And I want to make sure that all of you are there. And I can't wait for that day. And when we get there, not if, when we get there, we'll have another party like this. And we'll say, now wasn't that a great ride? Wasn't that a great ride? If you believe it, it will happen. I guarantee you. And I know a lot of you believe it. I guarantee the people in charge of the program believe it. And we will not rest until it happens. Thanks so much for supporting UCLA football. We'll see you on September 5th against San Diego State. Hopefully a lot of you will cro cross the country with us to go get those checkerboard guys in Tennessee. Go Bruins. Appreciate you. We're going to get it done.